You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is a special Monday, one-time only podcast for February 11th, 2019. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where we were just about to subscribe to the Words Matter podcast before it went boom. It's the professional left with Drift Class and Blue Gal. Did it go boom or did it go poof? It went, <laughs> it went, it went every which away. Well, and this this intersects. This story just intersected with so much of what we're all about. Yes, that uh, I told Drift Glass yesterday. Oh my gosh, no, we need to do a special fifteen minute show about the rise and fall of words matter, or as you're calling it, bullshit walks. Is that what yeah, we're that's, calling that's, it? Now? That will be Steve Schmidt's follow on podcast. We'll call bullshit see. walks because, as we all know, money talks and bullshit walks, and Steve right. Schmidt walked off his own podcast and it disintegrated which brings us to the special edition uh is brought to you by the good people at work the good lord split you emergency farewell party planners did you ever find yourself in a situation where everyone in your organization needs a farewell sheet cake because everyone quits at once if so the good people at where the good lord split you ask them about their special going out of business group rate this week's offer code is bullsheet cake right the bullsheet cake mm -hmm. uh, which is what uh, Steve Schmidt baked over there at Words Matter, apparently. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just explain to everyone out there for posterity. Yes. Because this will be one of those things that people talk about 10 years from now and say, yes, we are aware of all internet traditions. Yes. yes. <laughs> this is going to be a thing. Explain what exactly transpired at the Words Matter podcast. Well, the Words Matter podcast was an effort, according to the Daily Beast, to match the cent it was the center right's answer to the Pod Save America progressive broadcast, which was launched by the alums of the Obama administration. Because as right. we know, there is only one liberal podcast in the world, and it's the Pod Save America podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, and and there is only one liberal podcast in the world that's making that kind of money. Oh, absolutely. And stamping our political culture in that right. way. And they're doing a lot of really good things right now. I don't want to spend any no, time dissing them. They're doing a unify or die uh, fundraiser now for whoever the Democratic nominee yep. is. They're doing all kinds of things to make sure that we defeat Donald Trump. And so good on them. It is hilarious, however, to watch a essentially right wing Never Trumper media enterprise say, and we're the counterpart right. to the most successful liberal podcast. Well, and they launched it as the center so. right. Uh, and I, I have a feeling that they, <laughs> they misspelled it. I think originally it was word smatter, as in there's just a smattering of words they're going to throw onto a microphone and call it a podcast because yeah. I don't know yeah. what the hell they have to talk about because we are not a center right country. Uh, everyone involved in that podcast is a legacy of a catastrophically failed political party mm -hmm. that ex that exists now only in the imagination of David Brooks and exists now only at the sufferance of liberals who are credulous enough to let these people crash on their sofa. Yeah. So the only reason Steve Schmidt has a public platform is because he went from calling liberals traitors and poopy heads to calling Donald Trump a, a traitor and a poopy head. Yeah. Yeah. And so they launched this, he and Elise Jordan and Adam Levine, uh, all of whom are mentioned in the article that we will link to, started this podcast last August. And it didn't last more than a year. It didn't last half a year. Uh, because uh, they violated the, the rule that you're never supposed to violate in the mainstream media, which is they asked someone on the insider club. As we all know, there's a club in the media. And the, the two rules are, one, there's a club. And two, you're not in it. Uh, the rule is never ask anyone who's inside the club any question they don't want to answer. And during this last episode ever of Words Matter podcast, they asked Steve Schmidt a question he did not want to answer. 
and it, and it's the thing is it's his podcast <laughs> that's the thing that's hilarious this really is hey kids we got a costume in a barn let's make a podcast hey that's a great idea because you know those guys over at pod save america are making money hand over fucking fist so we should do it too because it's really easy all you need is a microphone a couple of buds you hang out you talk shit it's, it, how hard could it fucking be Right? right. And they made the mistake of getting all worked up over their job titles, apparently. Who the, who's the CEO and who's the founder and who's the chief of this and who's the executive of that. And they made the mistake of asking the founder of the podcast a question he was not ready to answer. And Steve Schmidt uh, threw down his microphone, uh, called it bullshit, stormed off the set. And that's the end of the Words Matter podcast. Shortly thereafter, Elise Jordan quit. I don't know how, what kind of staff they had, but if that happened in our household, the only one left would be the internet kitty. Right. And that would be that. Would be that. <laughs> um, but uh, having podcasts now for, what, what have we been doing this? Like 30 years now, Blue Gals? Yeah. Like 30, 35 Nine years? Nine years. Nine years. Yeah. Every Friday, pretty much like clockwork, every Friday for nine years. Uh this just was a doomed enterprise from, from the beginning, I believe. Well, and had... I'd like to interject a, a couple of notes. As the executive sure. producer of the Professional Life this Podcast. Is this, I'm, this is bullshit. <laughs> See, just like that, <laughs> just and it's like over. Just like that. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I'm the sound editor. You right. do the notes that we podcast from every week. Yes. And then I look them over and, and cut out stuff I don't want to talk about <laughs> pretty right. much. That's pretty uh, much that simple. Add a couple yeah. things that I want to talk about. But you're the one that does the news roundup and the you write all that stuff and put it I all do. down in our notes and then we talk. And I put a big block saying, talk about David Brooks for 20 minutes and you cut that out every week. Right. That's just left in there. But yes, and, and I have final <laughs> editorial say as to Absolutely. what remains in the sound edit or not. Uh -huh. So the fact that this podcast got to the point, even I'm, I'm shocked that they've been doing this since August. Yeah. And this now happened. This mm -hmm. just shows an incredible lack of communication. And, and, mm -hmm. and I feel entitled to talk about this from the standpoint that they are playing all of a sudden in my sandbox. Absolutely. They're, they are. Yes, yes, they're yes. Mm -hmm. calling what they do a podcast. And as I have mentioned many times, I am more than willing to help other people who are starting a podcast. We're going to be on a podcast at some point in the next, in the near future. That's a new mm -hmm. podcast that's invited us on, you know, any, Anyone who's starting one and is on the side of the angels politically, we can have disagreements. We can, sure. you know, debate issues, but we're more than willing to help any podcaster who's starting out and, and is indie. But the idea that they started in August and had no idea that there would be red lines that would come up during a show, first right. of all, right. that I don't, you know, I don't want to talk about that. And, and number two, that then that, would wind up in the edit of the final show and they would actually yes. shit all over Steve Schmidt and air his, mm -hmm. his meltdown and post oh, it. Two, <laughs> two, two side, two side notes before it was aired and posted. Uh, -huh. uh I believe Mr. Schmidt threatened legal action if they did that. And Great. then he offered to buy the tape from <laughs> them. So that never saw the light of day. <laughs> You know, so first of all, there's a, <laughs> apparently you've been sniffing around, you've been living in the universe of the Inquirer too long, where oh, those are just geez. the standard operating procedure. Right. Can I threaten you into not saying this in public? Can I bribe you? Not? No? Well, then fuck you. I'm going to blow it all up and, and storm off the set. Um, but that's, that's, that's the point. The, this podcast we do, which we love doing, and we've been doing for a very long mm -hmm. time, um, is first of all, we we know there's gonna be another one next right. week, so you don't have to say everything in the world right now. You don't have to respond immediately, although we do try to stay you know divided up between the news and sort of a broader commentary on politics and culture mm -hmm. and media. And sometimes include and, a few personal notes about our lives and as oh, yeah, they relate yeah. to those things. Sure, sure. Why why would you listen to just you know disembodied voices shouting at you? No, we're real people. <laughs> Well, so, and stuff you could read, you know, uh, bullet bulleted for you on a bunch of different websites. That's not why people come to the right, podcast. Right. What? And we've said this before, and we've had it echoed back to us. We give people, we try to give people vocabulary to understand the world in which they live. The problem that that 
that Steve Schmidt has is he can't bear up under an honest discussion of the world in which he Especially lives. Especially since because... he's been hired by Howard Schultz. Exactly. So yeah. the whole point, the whole point, see, the podcast, really, as far as I can tell, the podcast they were doing was, here's another revenue stream for my media mm-hmm. presence. Mm-hmm. Uh, here's here's something else I can put on my resume. It's, it's another way to to reflect a little bit of money, a little bit of light onto my career. And not to criticize me or ask me any hard questions, because that is not why Steve Schmidt or any of these never Trumper fuckers go on television. They go on television to be to be asked softball questions by people who they already have an existing relationship with. I, I think this brings up all kinds of really interesting questions about control, sure. about mm-hmm. uh, honesty, and about the limitations of the medium that you're in. Because yes. the one safe place that Steve Schmidt knew he wasn't going to be asked any hard questions up until the point where he got hired by Howard Schultz was MSNBC. Cable news was a place where no one is ever going to ask David Brooks, you know, what about what you wrote about two years ago? What about what you wrote during the Bush administration? They're never going to ask David Brooks. They're never going to ask Rick Wilson. They're never going to ask Charlie Sykes or or a bunch of other people who've blocked me. They're never going (laughs) to ask them about what happened yesterday because what happened yesterday is bad yep. for business yep and it's like politicon it's just yeah oh well it's ann colder and you know some rando person on msnbc yeah. on the same panel isn't that cute having an having an air quote debate right. that means an nothing air quote will lead yep. nowhere that's it that's it's it. just yeah. it's just it's a it's a it's a yeah. it's a sideshow yeah. and you pay your money and go see the you know the the dog-faced boy and the bearded lady fight yes right and right. that's what it's for and it never goes anywhere it never advances any causes we really do believe that what we do as small as it is and as local as it is and as cornfield based as it is, our job is to advance a political agenda, advance a political understanding and advance the understanding of the world we're living in. In, in, in a way that will affect real people's lives. You know, this is yes. about healthcare. And, and, this is about education. Exactly. This is about making Americans' lives better. It's not about jerking off. It's not one big Chardonnay party in the Beltway, no. which is what and, Steve Schmidt thought he was going to be allowed to continue. And had, had every yeah. reason to believe that he yeah. would. And that was the sum and substance of the last third of my gigantic blog post today, which I had fun with. But, you know, when we were going through the healthcare beatdown, the the terrifying moment by moment, are we going to lose it all? Are we going to end up with nothing? Are we going to end up, you know, who knows what's going to happen with us and the kids especially right. and millions of other Americans? That was as real as it gets behind the microphone. And we sh- we didn't come to our listeners to complain or to cry, even though we do complain and cry. It was to share with you, this is what's happening in the real world to real people. To millions of people. Just like yep. you. Yeah, yep. exactly. Give a voice to the people who don't get to go on cable news and talk about marginal tax rates. And the function, truly, the function of the mainstream media is to protect people like Steve Schmidt from any questions. Yeah, yeah. That's their job. They, they go on these shows. Uh, if you're inside the club, you are absolutely protected. You're never going to see Joe Scarborough stick a knife in you if you're a fellow traveler. Yeah. They might edge up to the, and this applies to liberals too, too, and liberal broadcasters too. If you're a friend of the network, they're never going to ask you any questions about what you were doing before 2016. Well, and you you mentioned that when uh, Saturday Night Live did a Chuck Todd cold open. Yes. And I said, yes. you know, they need better writers on this skit. And you said, no, they need to not be NBC. Because right. as long as they're NBC and Chuck Todd's on NBC, they're never going to twist the knife. And I thought, yeah. oh, yeah. Well, give me you know, a 120 ounce foam glove tap to the chin. Yeah. And oh, it's oh, look, we're making fun of Chuck Todd. But nothing that he wouldn't run on his own show and say, oh, see, I not. can take a joke. Yeah, yeah. And so with every expectation that no one would ever ask him any hard questions, mm-hmm. because that's what Rick Wilson has come to expect mm-hmm. from his liberal friends mm-hmm. and his conservative friends. Right. That's what Charlie Sykes expects. That's what Eric Erickson, who's now decided he's a... He's a pro-Trump guy. All these clowns have been told in, you know, in the unwritten law of the media, don't worry, nobody's going to fuck with you. Nobody's going to ask you about what you're doing up in Wisconsin in 2010. Nobody's going to ask you about the ads you used to run Rick, Will, Rick Wilson, knifing people like me in the back. Nobody's going to ask you about that. You're, you, you have a free field. So 
the problem was um, Steve Schmidt flipped once too often and too fast. So he flipped from being a right wing, cold, stone cold right wing conservative hitman to calling Donald Trump a poopy head, which is great. And 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 half the liberal you know intelligentsia fell in love with him, and the other half of us, the minor half, the the grassroots half, were screaming, "Do not trust this guy." Do not trust him. His whole thing is being professionally indignant. And he's finding it to his economic advantage to be indignant about Donald Trump now. Not the Republican Party, as it has been all his entire fucking adult life. Just the cutoff date is 2015. Anything before that is fucking off yep. limits. So let's all agree to call, let's all agree, let's all agree to call uh, Donald Trump an idiot. And now you're my friend. And I was out there banging my little tin drum saying, he's not your friend. He's going to fucking knife you in the back. Why don't you ever understand this? How they have to, you have to apologize. You have to confess. You have to atone. You have mm -hmm, to repent. Mm -hmm. And then you get yeah. absolved. But none of these people want to do any of that. They just want to go straight from calling me a traitor to having a book deal and going on MSNBC going, isn't it a shame that Donald Trump ruined my beautiful Republican party? And that's what Steve Schmidt expected from his own podcast. But then they flipped around and said, okay, but now you're working for Howard Schultz. So what so are his what? policies? And they asked him one. And he lost right. it right. the moment he said, you know, he's not really running yet. It's like, oh my God, yeah. he's probably paying yeah. you six figures a month to be. Yeah. Yep. be and, and the reason he's paying you is because of your darling status on MSNBC. That's exactly so right. That's, that's exactly, exactly right. why mm -hmm. he, you are marketable to people like Howard Schultz. And you said it yourself mm -hmm. this morning, Drift You said, look, anybody who <laughs> sees Howard Schultz tossing money out of his limo and saying, can you make me president? Right. Can you make me president? Going over and picking up that money and saying, sure, I can do that. You know. No sure. Problem. Yeah. No problem. And, that, and you've no, got the no. street cred to be <laughs> to be on MSNBC on a regular basis. But but the mistake that he made was thinking he could then go back to MSNBC and still be completely unaccountable for mm -hmm. for representing Howard Schultz as a candidate. Uh, well, you know, no, he's not really running yet. He's just exploring. Why is he paying you? That's the thing. If you're going to be a grifter, which is exactly what he is, he's a mercenary. Yeah, he'll work for, he'll work for anyone who keeps his tax rates low Yeah, and uh, follows some sort of imaginary, as you say, imaginary conservatism that only exists right. in New York City and upstate New York. Yeah. Right. But if you're going to be a grifter, which all of these never Trumpers are. There might be one exception out there, but really at this point, as a class, they are a bunch of fucking grifters. And they all went long on Hillary winning and Trump losing. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Remember that. That's really important to remember. They went long on Hillary Hillary winning so they could bash her for four years. Yep. Right. And well, bash her and sweep into power like the uh, uh, neoconservatives did in the Republican Party during the Bush administration. After 9-11. Yep. Suddenly, all the neocons were in favor, yep, right? Bill yep. Crystal and Paul Wolfowitz, all yep. those clowns, were suddenly running the fucking show. Dick Cheney was prepositioned to take advantage of it, and we're off to the races. These people, I swear to God, because none of them came out for Hillary Clinton. No. None of them were out there begging people. To, you know, Bill, uh, Bill Crystal went as so far as to haul uh, David French from, you know, from his bold, you know, <laughs> that was going to be the, the alternative. Yes. To yeah, Trump. They, right. <laughs> I really think this guy's got what it takes. Uh -huh. like, who the hell is this? Guy? Well, it's God. a guy who works for me at the weekly standard now, which is now called the bulwark, which yep. is where Charlie Sykes now works. We're going to make, make him, we're going to run him as a third party because it was, I can't, we can't touch the third rail because the third rail is Hillary. Now, some of them did. Some of them said, well, you know, but for the most part, these people were, were going through Jeb, and Marco and and Ted Cruz mm -hmm. and just dragging their nails as Donald Trump just swallowed their entire party because their party is Donald Trump. And they were finally confronted with the horror of, oh, my God, this guy's going to be the nominee. What the fuck are we going to do? Well, here's the thing. He can't possibly win. Everyone knows he can't win. 
So we're going to go long on bashing Trump, knowing that he's going to lose, Hillary's going to win, then we will sweep to power in the Republican Party right. as the We Told You we So told caucus. You so party, exactly. And yeah. we'll be in charge. And and Steve Schmidt and Rick Wilson and Charlie Sykes will all look like fucking geniuses. Because yeah. we came out against Trump. We told you he'd lose. We told you he yeah. wasn't worthy of the name Republican and you didn't believe us. Yeah. And then he won. Yeah. And then he won. Yeah. And suddenly... Four years of glorious Hillary witch hunts are out the window, yep. and all the people, the worst ghouls and monsters and thugs in American politics, you're on the wrong side of all these people. Yep. So what do you do? You find a bunch of credulous liberals who will let you crash on the sofa until the storm passes. Yeah. yeah. And you go over to MSNBC and say, look at this bold stance I took against Donald Trump. And as long, you know what? As long as you don't ask me one fucking thing about what I was doing before 2015 – I'll come on your show and call Donald Trump a poopy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's what Rick Wilson got a book deal. And Charlie Sachs got a book deal. And Max Boot, I assume is going to get, get a book deal. And David Frum's got a book deal. And they're all in demand. And all they're doing is ripping off and repurposing the liberal critique of their own Republican party. The same liberals they spent their entire career calling traitors. And the problem with Steve Schmidt is he got a little too far out ahead. He flipped the grift once too often and got caught outside of the safe bubble of, we're not going to ask you any questions as long as you stick to these subjects. Now, that's why I side with him on this. Because the unwritten rule that protects all these assholes is that none of them will ask either of them or any of them any questions that will make them look bad or that have been pre-approved. So Steve Schmidt had every reason, as a member of the club, Steve Schmidt had every reason to believe that he was going to go into his own podcast and never be asked a single embarrassing thing. And the fact that he was well, and the fact that you know, defending he's a the tax policy of the candidate that you have hired yourself onto, <laughs> and you throw down the headphones and start swearing for six minutes because a friend of yours asked about, oh, so you're working for this candidate? Tell me about his tax policy, and you throw a fit and then threaten. I mean, the whole thing is just he is out, like you say, mm -hmm. he's so far out over his skis working for Howard Schultz and he's now burned his bridges with MSNBC and, 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 and now he's trying to buy the tape back and, and somehow erase the mm -hmm. past that way. That was just the cherry on top where, because erasing the past and pretending you didn't say or didn't do what you did is the Republican model. If they live or die by this stuff, they really right. do. And, and this is why we expect our listeners will continue to listen to us after the 2020 election. Yeah. Because, uh, and I want to end on this. Um, there's a woman on uh, Twitter, Paulette Paris One, at Paulette Paris One, whose Trumper brother uh -huh. mailed to her. <laughs> a copy of the Russia hoax yes. and it, the illicit scheme to clear Hillary Clinton and frame Donald Trump by uh, Jarrett at Fox News, the Jarrett guy. Yeah, um, it's a ripoff. The cover is a total ripoff of the um, Russian roulette book. The same color yeah, red. Same color I scheme, mean, it's yeah. it's abs it's absolute counterfeit. Uh, so she wanted to know what to do with this book. She's against book burning. Uh, but she might be willing to make an exception. Her Trumper brother mailed her this book about, you know, uncovering the plot to make sure Hillary Clinton never got indicted. That right. That's what this book is about, in spite of her many crimes. And a lot of people said use it as toilet paper, et cetera. But I said, save it right. and mail it back to him in 2022. Mm -hmm. By that time, he will be an independent. Right. <laughs> Swear to God. Swear to and, God. And, you know, we we need to remember the past. We need to re remember to the point that there are no lifeboats. And there right. are no lifeboats when Steve Schmidt sails off with Howard Schultz and then tries to moor his boat over at MSNBC and pretend, I'm not working for any Republicans. I'm not trying to help Trump. I'm not doing anything. I'm just an, an, an analyst. No, you're not. Mm -hmm. You're a partisan. You're there to make money. And whatever marketability you can give your message, you're going to do it. That's why no one should be really worried about Steve Schmidt. Because I, <laughs> I, as, I, as I say uh, to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury, here's what I predict. After taking Howard Schultz for every fucking nickel he can, very soon after that, maybe after a 30 or 60 day timeout, Steve Schmidt will be right back where he belongs in the loving embrace 
of the Insiders Club on MSNBC. Mm -hmm. All will be forgiven. No one will remind him of it. They might needle him once or twice about it because, boys and girls, there is a club and you are not in it. He'll be back on in time for the election to analyze the Republican returns. He absolutely will be. We're not going to do an Internet Kitty today. This is a special episode. Yes. But we love you guys, and we will see you on Friday with our regular show. We want to thank you guys for listening. And uh, hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing on Monday? Oh, Blue Gal, they're doing better than Steve Schmidt. Let's think about living. Think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, lovey dovey. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2018, DGBG Productions Incorporated.